Emotional hangovers are one of the most difficult things to manage if it happens to you more than once. You know, you know, I, I used to experience emotional hangovers myself when I was going to college and working and then doing an internship at the same time. And I was taking about mm, seven to 10 classes a semester while working on campus and doing an internship off campus and dealing with mental health of my clients at the time of the kids in the daycare that I had seen. And let me tell you, I crashed by the 10th year of my education when I was done with school finally. Emotional hangovers can also occur if you are dealing with multiple adverse events. If you're dealing with traumatic situations that are not easy for you to get out of, if you're dealing with traumatic situations that has impacted your memory, uh, maybe it's impacted your heart, maybe it's impacted just who you are spiritually, right? Your soul. Emotional hangovers can do a number on you. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about emotional hangovers and intergenerational trauma. Uh, and, and I think in this video, you're going to be able to see how it ties together. Before we jump in, let me just introduce myself in case you are new to my channel. My name is Tamara. I'm internationally and I'm board certified as a trauma therapist. I'm licensed in mental health and I specialize in treating children, teens, and families as well as adults who are dealing with trauma right in my private practice. Let's jump in. So I want you to think of emotional hangovers as being similar to a hangover that you would have after you drink alcohol. Now I must admit I'm not a drinker but from what I've heard from friends and family in the past alcoholic hangovers are not to be played with you can get a headache you can start vomiting your equilibrium gets thrown off right you may feel lightheaded and dizzy and for a lot of people who have clinical depression they begin to also feel a little bit you know more depressed or more anxious things get a little bit worse for them and intensify while the same can be said for uh, an emotional hangover which is triggered by some kind of emotional event like I said at the beginning it could be an adverse event that has happened over time right so like intergenerational trauma where there's a trauma that happened way back when and somehow it has trickled down the impact of it has trickled down to the the youngest I could say generation within your family but I want you to also think of an emotional hangover as being the state in which your brain is hijacked by emotion let me say that again. You want to think of an emotional hangover as an emotional state where your brain has been hijacked from the parts of reality that you need to be, you know, you need it to be tuned into, right? So when you are in that full blown emotional state, you begin to feel maybe later on, maybe a couple hours later, you begin to feel emotionally exhausted. And that could include this, this feeling of exhaustion, right this feeling of being disconnected from things that you're typically connected to uh being unmotivated and not being able to you know think in your mind okay i need to do a b and c today so that i can get through uh d e and f right not being able to order events or line them up correctly could could result from emotional hangover also being unplugged and not being able to really click in to who you are as a person now in the past where i've had you know medical conditions where i've needed to be put on medication to help me cope or i've had a severe injury in the past where i've had to be put on muscle relaxers for example being detached from things because i'm under the influence of a muscle relaxer i'm under the influence of a tylenol or an advil which really takes me down <laughs> it really does i'm worse than a child being in that state can really make you feel unplugged and and it takes me a few hours, maybe an entire day before I'm back to myself again. And so an emotional hangover can be the exact same thing. Now, what is that? What are those adverse events that can lead to emotional hangovers? Well, let's look at the past, okay? So the first thing that could really uh, begin to impact you and create an emotional hangover would be DNA modifications or epigenetics now right here in this video right here which I'm gonna link right up here for you uh, talks about it was my live chat that I did on my book release date and it, it, it talked about epigenetics and what it is so just for the purposes of the fact that I already did a video above on this topic and you know you can go to my previous videos like this one right here to learn about epigenetics I'm just gonna make this very brief and say DNA modifications 
things that happens beneath the surface while the fetus is developing and over time as the baby grows up right that can truly create an emotional hangover just the dna modifications that makes you more susceptible to traumatic experience or more susceptible to those risk factors that i always talk about on this channel here's the list of the risk factors right here that can help you understand what i'm talking about but when there's DNA modifications, it can either make you less susceptible or more susceptible to things harming you in the future. And so when DNA is modified, right, it either helps you, you become the strongest and the fittest, right? Or you become vulnerable and overtaken by your DNA. The next thing is cumulative trauma, right? Here's one trauma here because your mother and father were narcissists and didn't treat you with love. Here's another layer of trauma because your brother sexually molested you. Here's another layer of trauma because you had a car accident and couldn't get out of your car and now you're suffering with severe trauma, right? Then here's another layer of trauma. You went to your job today and they fired you and you didn't know it was coming so cumulative trauma builds on one level of trauma and continues to build and cumulative trauma can really destroy you because you may not know how your body and your mind and your emotions are going to possibly react to natural occurrences in your life right sometimes when you have trauma it can make you a little bit more sensitive to other issues going on in your world, whether it's traumatic or not, right? So it's almost like the brain gets so overwhelmed that everything feels like a trauma. The next one is, you know, multiple experiences of microaggressions over time. Um, and I'm also gonna throw in here what's called cultural conditioning. Microaggressions, let me start with that, okay? It's basically, uh, it, it tends to be either racial or cultural or social, right? Microaggressions are those little small small snap minute facial expressions, eye contact, uh, body twitches, uh, you know, hair being flipped around. They're, they're like really tiny social cues that you're disliked or that there's something wrong with you and it's causing the other person to behave a certain way towards you. Let's say, for example, uh, we're talking about a racial microaggression right you may have a question for someone who is of the opposite race than you and for just a split second you you catch them smirk at you and then put a smile on because now they know that you're looking at them right and there may be times when microaggressions can be heard with the ears right certain ways that people say things to you and the the, the underlining meaning can truly be heard although they're not really verbalizing what you sense they're saying right so what they're not saying verbally is what they are saying and you can sense that under the surface right those are microaggressions now cultural conditioning is you know that I have experienced racism for example and because I experience it repeatedly over time and my long lineage and history and and family line has also experienced racism right i have been culturally conditioned to believe that i am a problem right if you have dna modifications that makes you more vulnerable to traumatic experiences if you have multiple experiences of microaggressions and cultural conditioning if you have multiple experiences of discrimination marginalization racism feeling like you have all of these things happening to you is going to cause that feeling of an emotional hangover right because you're just exhausted from all the emotional battling that you have to go through now the next thing that could be considered an adverse event that can add to the emotional hangover is a loss of or altered memory now when you've had a traumatic experience or when you're experiencing some kind of burnout or intergenerational trauma keep in mind that memories are often altered now there's two forms that i think is important for this discussion one is dissociative amnesia Dissociative amnesia is this, that I've experienced a traumatic incident and I am missing within my mind certain pieces of the traumatic experience. And so therefore my story is choppy because I can't remember anything really that's essential because I either blacked out for a moment or my brain went into shock mode so much that I can't piece together in this puzzle 
what has happened to me. Now, there's something also known as declarative memory, and it's similar, right? Parts of your memory is kind of choppy. You're not able to recall from experience something that has happened to you. And that's because your brain has been altered. That's because the traumatic experience or the burnout or the intergenerational trauma has impacted you so, so much that your brain may actually remember other incidents in that moment, right? Like, like you know, bits and pieces of what happened before or after, but during that traumatic experience or in a traumatic experience that's intergenerational right child molestation racism uh, abuse neglect traumatic bonding whatever whatever has been following your your family history for many years that can result in dissociative amnesia it can also result in declarative memory issues uh, where you're not able to pull from experience your you know any kind of information that you would be able to remember otherwise normalization of marginalization that's a lot to say normalization here it is right here normalization of marginalization is basically the idea that you know you've had family members kind of normalize that you're discriminated against that you're marginalized right that you're disliked that society doesn't respect you and so then what happens this kind of conditioning right conditioning means kind of creating a pattern of or kind of um, what's another word for conditioning kind of teaching you how to respond a certain way right so 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 the normalization of marginalization in your family whether it's racial social age you know whatever socioeconomic conditioning right you know like you're of this particular class and you better get used to it kind of kind of mindset that can also create an emotional hangover right because how many times do you have to keep being reminded that you are low income how many times do you have to be you know reminded that you are African American or you're Hispanic or you're Native American or you're Puerto Rican right how many times do you have to be reminded that you are of of a certain you know class level and you're going to be isolated from society because of that right if you continue to receive those messages in a normalized way then you're not going to have the energy to get out of it right? Right? So what do you do? You collapse under all the pressure and you have an emotional hangover. Another thing is a general feeling of family and community disconnect, right? After you experience on multiple occasions that family and community disconnect, you're not gonna be encouraged, right? You're gonna be overwhelmed. And so that in and of itself can cause an emotional hangover. It can cause burnout. Um, it can also cause emotional instability that leads to anxiety, panic attacks, depression, and even post-traumatic stress disorder. There's a family and a community disconnect and you feel it deeply traumatic dumping I almost forgot what it, what it was called traumatic dumping right okay I think I got it right that time um, traumatic dumping is you know what that is it's somebody else takes their traumatic experience and dumps it on you right it's it's they need somebody to talk to it's too much for them to bear right so what do they do they take all their trauma and they dump it on you well if you experience family trauma dumping where multiple family members dump their trauma on you then you're likely to experience that that emotional hangover right because now you're carrying all their trauma and maybe you're struggling with your own and you know you're going a little bit over this way and you're going a little bit over that way trying to carry your trauma and their trauma right so then what do you do you collapse in fatigue right you're tired traumatic comparisons and and this can happen within the family where one family member says well my trauma was sexual abuse and then another person in the family says yeah but my trauma was two sex assaults sexual assaults right somebody else in the family who may be an older generation a grandpa may come along and say you know what none of you have really important situations because when i was when i was fighting in the war back in 1970 i saw a guy get shot and this that the other and so what kind of happens is everybody starts to compare each other's trauma Traumas, right and that can cause emotional exhaustion on your part because in some way you may feel like you're being misunderstood or you have to prove your trauma was serious and that can take a toll on you and let me also add to this conversation family estrangement can cause an emotional hangover right just feeling detached and disconnected from your family is just too much to bear so all of these things all of these adverse historical and family and intergenerational challenges can truly cause an emotional hangover. You need one important thing to experience an emotional hangover and that is an emotional experience that is triggered in your mind, 
in your heart, right? And so you might also have PTSD, but in, in most cases, an emotional hangover is on that spectrum of PTSD. PTSD may be over here at a 10, an emotional hangover, an emotional exhaustion, and a burnout stage may be at one, two, three, or four, and five, right? It may be mild to moderate. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. So keep in mind that an emotional hangover can sometimes be exacerbated by continual trauma. You know, there's a lot that has to be done here in terms of healing, but I'm going to come back with a live chat on Wednesday. We're going to talk a little bit more about this. Thank you so much for being with me in today's video, guys. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that bell button to stick around with me. Um, and thank you so much for the likes and watching my videos repeatedly. It really does help. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.